hey loves and welcome back to my channel so in today's video we are going to learn how to make this ruffle organza gown um mostly for kids so i'm going to show you guys how to make them how to make this step by step and the video is mainly for the down part i'm not show you guys how i made the upper part so this is my doll face and first of all i will fold a triangular flay in order to achieve this you fold a triangular flay there is no need um for a full flay or a circular flay so you fold and you fold again you can see how my flay is looking it is triangular in shape and one side is open so you are going to measure the radius the radius is your waist measurement divided by 3.142 so i divided the, the girl's waist by 3.142 and i got 6 point something but i decided to make it um 7.5 round plus the zip because of the zipper allowance so for the full length of the flay you will subtract the half length from the full length of the gown like the full length of the gown minus the half length and you will get the length of the flay so you go ahead and cut out so after cutting this flay you are going to divide it into three steps or four steps depending on how many tiers on or how many steps you want your gown to have so you can see how i opened my flay it is um, on fold now just twice it is no longer folded four times this is two times so I'll, the full length is 19 inches the full length of this flay right now is 19 inches so i'll go ahead and divide that 19 into four so i decided to make it five five inches though it is not the actual um number but i made it five five inches because i will not even need the lower tier so i divided that 19 by five five inches and i have four steps or four tiers right now so i'll go ahead and mark the five five inches so each step of this flea is five inches long i don't know if you understand so the essence of dividing this flea is to hide the gathers you know i'll gather my organza on each line so i don't want people to be seeing the organza from the outside so i'll go ahead and cut all of them open so that when i gather my organza on each line i will use the other one and cover it so that the rough parts will be inside people will not be seeing it from the outside so i'll go ahead and divide them so after dividing i have four pieces right now i have the number one the number two the number three and the number four so i numbered them so that i will not get confused i remember this flay is just on full like i folded it once before doing this thing that i just did now so after that i'll cut out my lining i'll fold my lining also i'll fold a triangular flay for the lining um and i'll also mark the 7.5 that i marked before for the waistline uh, from the center of the triangle i'll mark seven point the 7.5 that i marked on the main satin i will still mark it here the only difference would be on the full length the full length of the main satin was 19 right but the full length of the lining will be like 15 inches or 16 inches highest so that it will not be showing people will not be seeing it from the outside so the lining will be shorter than the main satin or the main fabric so after doing that i'll go ahead and cut out and i will not divide my lining the way i divided the main satin there is no point dividing the lining the reason why i divided the satin is because of the organza gathers that i'll make on it so this is my organza so i will cut my organza right now i'll just cut it like straight straight so remember each step of that satin was five inches it's five inches right but the organza will not be five inches the organza will be eight inches five inches for the main length and three inches for overlapping because 
each step will be on top of the other right so you add extra four inches or three inches or even five inches to the main length each step of that flea is five inches i added extra three inches or four inches to it because each step will overlap the order they will overlap the order so that extra three inches or four inches is for the overlapping so right now the each length of this organza is eight inches it is not five inches it is eight inches so i'll go ahead and cut as many as possible because i want the flay to be full if you don't want it to be full fine so i'll cut as many as possible i bought five years of organza and i used four years for this fullness that i achieved so i'll go ahead and cut my eight eight inches or nine nine oh sorry nine nine inches i i measured five plus extra four inches so that was nine nine inches eight eight inches is still okay so i will turn each of them with this crino line i bought red i couldn't find the pink but red is not bad so i'll go ahead and join this organza i'll keep joining until i have a very long organza you know organza is just by 60 right so i'll go ahead and keep joining this organza until i achieve a very long shoe so after that i will turn that long organza with this screen line i will add this screen line to the hem or to the edge so you can see what i have right now i have added my screen line and the organza is very long right now so it is ready i can go ahead and start making my gathers so i will make my gather on each step like on the up this is number one i gathered this one on the waist side i did my first gather on the waist side i'll also go ahead and do my second gather on the number two i'll be doing it on the upper part of that stair or of the tier so you can see this one i am making this is my number three i have made my number one and my number two this is my number three i'll keep on gathering my organza on the number three and this organza will be on the upper part of the flea like not at their lower part you will make it at the upper you can make it at anywhere you can gather um on any area you want but making it at the upper part is better so i am gathering on number three and after gathering on number three i'll also go ahead and gather on number four so this screen line is strong i am not making my i don't want my gathers to be too thick because if it is too thick the crino line will stand too much it happened to the number one so this time around um my gathers are, are a kind of scanty so that this crino line will relax so i am done gathering on number three and after doing that i'll go ahead and gather on number four sorry i i got that number on number two i made a mistake so this is number three i'll go ahead and gather on number three so after making your gathers on each of the pieces on each of the steps you will go ahead and join them together the essence of making these gathers separately like making it on each piece is because if you gather on the satin people will be seeing it so gathering on each piece is better after gathering you will now sew them back so after sewing them back you realize that the rough part will be on the inside of the gown it will not be showing on the outside so that's the essence of making these gathers on each piece of this satin so i am done with number three and this is what i have i'll also go ahead and gather on number four so if you don't want to add this satin for the number four it is still okay you can just make this gather on the 
down part of number three. I don't know if you understand. But if you want to have the satin for number four, you can add it. But if you don't want, just remove it. Just remove the last tear. Like the last step. Just remove the lining and gather only the organza on the down part of the number three or the second to the last. So I don't know if you understand. But this time around, I added it. So I am done with my number four. That means I have made my organza gathers on each of the step the number one the number two the number three and the number four so right now i'll start joining all of them together this is my number four i'll go ahead and join number three on it so this is the number three you can see i made my gathers at the upper part of the number three so i'll go ahead and join the lower part of the number three to the number four you can see the lower part of the number three i did not make any gathers on it so i'll go ahead and join it on the number four so you can see how i am joining it right now and by so doing the rough seam will be hidden so you go ahead and join the lower part on, of number three to the upper part of number four the same thing when you are joining number two you will join the lower part of number two to the upper part of number three so it will be easier for you this way that's why i said you should make your gathers at the top of each tier or at the top of each step so that you will join the lower part to the upper part of the next one it will be easy for you that way so i'll go ahead and join so after joining this number three and number four i'll go ahead and join number two and then join the number one finally so if you are joining at the end part you realize that one might may be longer than the other fine it doesn't matter because we do not really use our pattern paper to draft this. Had it been we used our pattern paper to draft this, we would have added half an inch to each of them for seam allowance. But if you have any excess, you can you can trim it off. The excess will not be too much, it will just be small. So it won't really matter. You can go ahead and trim it off. So I'm taking my time to join the number three and the number four. So I am currently approaching the end part. So you can see that the number four is a kind of longer, it's longer the number four is longer than the number three well with just um like three inches or four inches so you can go ahead and trim it off it won't matter so i am done with number three and number four right now i'll introduce my number two i will join my number two so this is my number three and number four you can see that the number three is overlapping the number four you cannot really see where i joined the two from so right now i am joining number two i'm joining the lower part of the number two to the upper part of the number three So after doing this, I'll also repeat it on the number one and that will be all. So after joining, you go ahead and trim and then join it to the upper part. I told you guys that I'll not show you how I made the upper part of this gown. You are free to make the top the way you want. You're just free to make it the way you want. Then after you can join the lower part to it and then cover with your lining. So this method will give you a very neat finishing. So 
so i am done joining the number two to the number three and the number three um, is a kind of longer than the number two so i'll still go ahead and trim off that remaining part so i have number two number three and number four so right now i'll go ahead and join the number one that one has the waist measurements as well so i have three right now i'll go ahead and join number four number one sorry i'll go ahead and join the last one and i will have my four steps complete right now so this is the lower part of the number one and i'm joining it to the upper part of the number two So that is it. You take your time and do that. So if you don't want to use a hard crinoline, line, you can as well buy the soft crinoline. line. But your crinoline line should be from like 3 inches upward. Like the wideness of the crinoline line or the horse hair breed should be from 3 inches upwards. It will help the organizer to stand very very well so i am done making my gathers i'll go ahead and close the sides like uh, sorry this part is not showing i'll go ahead and run a stitch on the sides in order to hold all of them down like i'll go ahead and hold them down on the side i'll also repeat the same thing on the other side so after doing that i'll go ahead and join it to the upper part this is the upper part that i made for her i'll go ahead and join the lower part to the upper part and please do not forget to iron use a low heat iron so that you will not burn your organs do not forget to iron please it is very very important so that is it at the end of the day this is what um the ruffles look like and you can see it is very fine please do not forget to subscribe and see you in my next video bye